Today's video is all about how to choose between a matte screen and a glossy screen when you are choosing what laptop you want to buy. I've been contemplating this thing for a good year now and I've tried a bunch of different devices both with matte screens and with glossy screens to really be able to give an as good opinion as possible. I'm W2Best, I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials and if you like this video after watching it I would be super happy if you want to put a like on the video. If you want to communicate with me you can find me either in the comment section or on Instagram where I'm also at W2Best. Let's have a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of one matte and one glossy screen. This is my MateBook 14 side-by-side -side with my Yoga Slim 7 and as you can see they are really different already from this point. You can straight away see that there's a lot more reflections in the MateBook 14. But this is in this state with what we are looking at on the screen right now. And this is gonna change when we change some settings and change what we're actually looking at. As you can see now, I set them up side by side outdoors. Because I feel like outdoors is the first thing we need to talk about. I would say that when you choose a glossy screen, it will be a bit harder to use it outdoors mainly because it will be very angle dependent so you really need to adjust the angle of the screen and the angle of your laptop sideways to be able to see the screen properly as soon as there is some kind of reflections coming in they will be very very marked with the glossy screen with the matte screen that won't happen in the same way so you have much more flexibility of how you sit and how you angle your screen on the laptop. Moving to the most extreme of examples, here are the two laptops side by side in direct sunlight outdoors in the middle of the day. And with a dark background like this, it is really hard to see anything at all, even though if you put yourself in exactly the right position, you actually see quite a bit. But as you can see, most of what you see is actually my face and my camera there. When bringing up something that is a bit brighter on the screen, you can see that there's a pretty big difference between the glossy and the matte screen. And this is the kind of use case example where I think the matte screen really shines. I would be able to comfortably work on this matte screen, whereas in this glossy one I would basically see the reflections and have a really hard time to focus on what's actually on the screen. The second thing I find is really important here is that a glossy screen will pick up fingerprints easier. The matte screens, they do pick up fingerprints, especially if you have a touch screen and you touch it a lot. But I also find that the matte screens are a bit easier to wipe off. So if you just have a piece of cloth, you can just wipe it off really easy. But sometimes when you start wiping a glossy screen, it just feels like you're kind of wiping those fingerprints around and not really getting rid of them. I would say that it's actually really nice to have a matte touchscreen because you don't get as much fingerprints in the screen. Those are not as common as the glossy ones and with those glossy screens with touch in them you really need to make sure that you can clean your screen off on a regular basis. The third thing that I find matters a lot in this case is that the blacks on the glossy screen look a lot better. It seems to me that the contrast is a bit easier to achieve with a glossy screen. Sometimes I feel like the matte screens look a little bit washed out, even when they have good color accuracy and good brightness. Sometimes I even want to turn down the brightness a bit, because when turning the brightness up to max, I feel like the blacks get pretty washed out and almost look grey at some points. This MateBook 14 with its glossy screen have similar color accuracy as the matte one, but black colors come out way more nicely in this glossy version of the display than they do in the matte one. The fourth and the last point I want to bring up here is that you really need to think about brightness. When it comes to choosing between a glossy screen and a matte screen, it is super important to keep in mind how bright the screen will actually get. I have been using both glossy and matte screens with about 300 nits of brightness, and then glossy and matte screens with about 400 nits of brightness. And I really gotta say, 
300 nits of brightness is not enough if you have a glossy screen. If you want to use it at all outside or in brighter conditions, you really need to step up to about 400 nits of brightness. And even better if you can reach about 500 nits of brightness, which some of the nicer Mac computers have nowadays. When it comes to using a matte screen, you are not as dependent on being able to reach those higher brightness levels. So you could actually have 300 nits of brightness and still be pretty fine in lighter conditions and even outdoors. Here's an example of my older Dell computer using it in direct sunlight and it actually worked really fine to prep a presentation with this device in direct sunlight outdoors. So which one should you pick? That's kind of the golden question here, but I gotta say it's not easy to give you a straight up answer here. I will say though that if you can find a 400 nits or brighter monitor that has about 100% sRGB color gamut and is glossy, it will probably look a bit better than the equivalent in a matte screen. However, I find that because you don't have to fiddle around and angle and change things a lot, it is a little bit more convenient to use a laptop with a matte screen. Still, I would like it to be around that 400 nits of brightness because I feel like that is the golden standard. Getting a matte screen with a good color gamut and those 400 nits of brightness. It gives you the power to use it in very bright conditions but also take the brightness down a notch to be able to get those blacks a little bit more contrasty. Which one do you prefer? I would love to hear your opinion in the comment section down below. So let's discuss this matter a bit. And this video is part of a series. So there will be a few more coming out in what to choose between those different factors that actually play a pretty big role when it comes to deciding what laptop to get. I'm W2Best, I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials, and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.